whether you're off to find some winter sun or taking yourself away for a multi-month epic adventure around the entire globe. There are some notable tips, pieces of advice, laws that you're going to need to remember. Now, some are stranger than others, but equally as important. If you're on an epic cycling adventure with multiple legs, you can avoid a massive amount of hassle and logistical nightmare of taking your bike box or bag with you when you fly. All you need to do is find a local bike shop or even somewhere that does recycle packaging and use a cardboard box to pack your bike in, making sure it's nice and secure and padded. That way, your bike will be just fine when you travel. Try to use some bubble wrap or pipe lagging around the frame. Get something in between the forks and rear triangle, like a piece of plastic piping, anything really. Once you've reached your destination, all you need to do is find somewhere to recycle your box or even find another cyclist hunting for some cardboard. Then rebuild your bike and you're back on your way. Wanton and furious cycling, as called in the UK, can be punishable by law. Now this came in in 1861 and the wording hasn't been changed or even updated because to be honest, it describes it pretty well. Yeah, you can be stopped and find a hefty amount. You can even be given a prison sentence if you've caused any bodily harm by careless or dangerous riding. Most places in the world have limited public access, so you can't go and pitch your tent wherever you feel like it. However, a lot of European countries permit the use of public land access for all. The likes of Scotland, Finland, Iceland, Norway, Sweden, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Austria, Czech Republic and Switzerland all benefit from some version of the freedom to roam, also known as every man's right, the right to roam and the right of public access to the wilderness. They permit all the users of the land to roam freely as long as they act responsibly. So take care of the land they're on. So what this means for cyclists, allowing for some exclusions, is that you can ride anywhere and more importantly, camp anywhere too. Fantastic news for bike packers and tourists as you won't be hunting for the designated campsite or hotel. Leave no trace of where you stay, take your litter with you and take care of the environment and we'll all continue to be able to benefit from this freedom. Remember though, to check the rules and regulations and the laws of where you are, because let's be honest, we don't wanna be in breach of the law. If you end up running out of water in a remote location, or even down some country English lanes and you can't find a cafe or pub, to top your bottle up with. A good tip is to find a local church. Churches are notorious for having taps in the yard or even in the garden to kind of water their flowers. So it's a good tip to pop in there to fill up your bottle. But if you are in the outback in a proper remote location, it's always good to take some water purification tablets. That way you can fill up at a lake, at a stream or even a river. Some countries enforce strict speed limits for cyclists, just like cars. In Connecticut, you can't ride above 65 miles per hour, a speed that terrifies even the seasoned professional cyclists. But here in the UK, Richmond Park, very popular place for cycling, you can't ride above 20 miles per hour. Hampstead Heath, you can't ride above eight miles per hour. Wherever you ride though, make sure you stick to a safe speed you're comfortable with. General awareness and common sense go a long way when it comes to being safe and respectful around wildlife. Don't approach animals when on your bike because you might antagonize them or even worse, spook them. With this in mind, don't go creeping around quietly because you might just scare something you'd rather not. So just keep to normal conversation just so they're aware of your presence. Riding in many parts of North America, if you're out of the city, it's a good idea to bring some bear spray and keep it close to hand. Nothing replaces good preparation and knowledge of the area you're riding through, so brush up by reading about where you are. Better still, talk to the locals. They might have some advice on places best to avoid or recent sightings of wildlife. And remember to check for any country's special needs. For example, malaria. Malaria is prevalent in Africa, Central and South America, and even in the Middle East. But if you do your research, you'll be absolutely fine. No matter where you are in the world, it's a really good idea to keep your food away from camp. Now, obviously, if you're staying inside, this doesn't really apply. But if you're bikepacking and camping, take note. 
Wrap up any food you have in something airtight, like a roll top bag or a container, and hang it in a nearby tree. It might be bears in Canada, but even smaller animals will try and get into your tent in the middle of the night to finish off that curry you made for dinner. Now this goes for anything smelly, so like aerosols, deodorant, or even anti bat gel. Pop it in your air-locked, sealed bag, and you shouldn't be bothered through the night. Bells are compulsory in New South Wales, Australia. It's a findable offence to not have a bell mounted to your handlebars. In fact, Australia and its neighbour New Zealand are also the only two countries in the world to make it a regularly enforced legal requirement to wear a helmet. So it's vital you check before you travel to avoid a situation with the local authorities that we'd all rather avoid. In Japan, it's absolutely free to travel with your bike on the train, as long as it's stored in something called a Rinko bag. Now, the only difficult thing is it's got to fit in certain measurements. Your bike has to be two meters in length once packed away in the bag. If you're traveling on the high speed Shinkansen, I hope that's the way you could pronounce it, then the length, height, and width must total 250 centimeters. Oh yeah, and weigh 25 kilograms. Now it is recommended to book yourself on the Shinkansen train. Now there isn't any dedicated places to put your bike, so you might have to find places at the end of the carriageway or even behind the seats. Now there are, on popular cycle routes, places where you put your bike on a dedicated train for bicycles, where you don't need a Rinko bag. So make sure you do as much research as possible when visiting Japan, just so you can take advantage of being able to take your bike. A couple of other tips when riding in Japan. Don't use your bell because it's actually considered rude. Don't ride on the pavements because it's actually considered an offense and you could be fined, though the locals do do it because they're trying to get away from the traffic. Speaking of traffic, you might find that motorists tend to pass quite close. This isn't the same as the UK, for example. They're actually being cautious and assuming you're a good rider who will perform predictably and confidently. If you find this uncomfortable though, then it might be worth riding a bit more into the road. In Spain, the law states that anyone over the age of 16 has to wear a helmet if they're outside or riding in urban areas. Now the exemptions are if you're riding uphill, if it's really, really hot, or if you're a professional cyclist. So not all laws are created equal. Now this might be a really obvious one, but talk to your fellow riders when out and about. You're sure to not only make good friends, but gain some valuable insights into your route. They may know a scenic diversion, some trouble passing a local climb, or simply have some advice for the area. So don't be afraid, don't be shy, go up and chat to some fellow riders when you're traveling on your bike. Now that's the end of this video, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you've got any tips or tricks for riders traveling, then make sure you pop them in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, and as always, give this video a big thumbs up. And if you're hungry for an adventure video, I would well, definitely recommend this one. Go check it out. Proper adventure that. <laughs>